to you. Inez, thank you so much. In New York City, the push continues to get adults and now children over the age of five years old vaccinated against COVID-19. So that push comes as two New York City public schools are now closed due to COVID outbreaks. Joining us right now, New York City Health Commissioner, Dr. Dave Choksi. Nice to have you back on Good Day. How are you doing, Doc? I'm doing well. Thank you as always for having me. All right, give us the numbers first of all on uh, COVID outbreaks in New York City. Um, sure. Well, in terms of our uh, you know overall percent positivity, we've been at about 1.5, 1.6%. Uh, we are seeing uh, you know about 700, 800 cases across the city. Uh, every day. So um, although we're doing better than we have in recent months, um, there is still some risk uh, to COVID, which is why it's so important uh, that people get vaccinated and take precautions. Doctor, are you following breakthrough cases as well? Because I know I have a bunch of friends actually who were vaccinated, double vaxxed and have uh, gotten breakthrough viruses. Yes, I understand. Um, we are following breakthrough cases as well. We have that information up on our website. But what I'll tell you is that um, the risk to people who remain unvaccinated is significantly higher, both for infection, um, but particularly for severe outcomes like hospitalization and death compared to people who are vaccinated. So it's very clear um, that the best way to reduce your risk is to get vaccinated particularly to avoid uh, getting hospitalized or having even more severe outcomes. And as we look at the children ages 5 to 11 that got vaccinated this past week, last week, you saw a very huge interest similarly to when you started allowing people to get vaccinated. You couldn't even find an appointment. But uh, how are you dealing with this? This is obviously a good sign to you that things are working. And then how do you see things playing out? Yes, well, it's wonderful news, and I really love spending time uh, at our public schools over the last few days talking with families and kids who are so excited to get vaccinated. Um, some of the, the reasons why are, are particularly uh, just wonderful to hear. People who want to spend more time with their grandparents or play sports more safely. Or uh, one, one uh, young girl told me that she wanted to protect her baby brother, who was even younger and not eligible for vaccination. So just as you said, we've seen great demand. Uh, as of yesterday, over 40,000 kids uh, between the ages of five and 11 have already gotten their first dose. Um, and we do have appointments available across the city. Just go to nyc.gov slash vaccine finder. What percentage of kids have we vaccinated as of right now? You said 40,000, but what is that out of a whole? What, what's the big picture look like? Because you know, you're probably gonna get a drop off in interest and then you gotta figure out plan B. Yeah, these are important things that we're also thinking about. Um, the overall number of kids is over 600,000 uh, kids between the age of five and 11 in New York City. Um, and so we're, we're off to a strong start, uh, but we certainly have uh, work ahead of us. Um, we're making sure that we have all avenues of access open. Those school-based vaccination clinics that I mentioned, our pop-up sites, um, the other city sites where we've been vaccinating for months now, um, but a really important part of this for kids is to make sure that pediatricians and family doctors also have vaccine because we know a number of parents and families uh, will want to speak with their pediatrician um, before they get their child vaccinated. That's okay, um, and we expect that that'll be a big part of the campaign in the coming weeks. So, Doctor, um, some of the parents are reporting that there was not enough supply at some of these pop-up uh, vaccination sites. Will you continue to do that um, to meet the demand? Yes, absolutely. We did see a very high demand at, um, at certain sites uh, early in the week. Uh, we shifted around our, our vaccine supply as well as uh, bringing mobile vaccine buses on site to help with that demand. Um, and we'll continue to do that. Um, we want to meet people where they are. Wherever there's demand, we'll bring vaccine and we'll bring vaccinators uh, to get every single person uh, who wants to get the shot, um, that vaccine. So some charter schools, which are part of the public uh, you know, education system, are complaining to Mayor de Blasio that they are being left out of uh, this vaccination uh, period. And it's not the first time anybody outside the New York City public system has complained about that. Last year, the Catholic schools you know, basically sued the city because they were not getting tested uh, like city kids were. So. What I'm asking you is, 
are you going to expand this to charter schools and Catholic schools and other schools that are outside of the New York City public school system? Thanks, this is an important question. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're willing to work uh, with anyone. Um, we have, uh, you know, uh, vaccinators, um, including pharmacies um, who are willing to come on site uh, and, and vaccinate um, kids at, at all different schools, you know, public or otherwise. Uh, and so the health department um, and the city, we stand ready to partner uh, with anyone who is interested in getting kids vaccinated. As we know, two New York City public schools closed right now because of the surge. Uh, what are you expecting, doctor? Are you hear anything more about that? Um, no, you know, we are following this closely, of course. Um, overall, you know, I have to make sure to emphasize our schools remain very safe uh, because of the precautions that we put in place. Uh, the vaccine mandate for everyone, uh, all of the adults in the school building, now moving on to um, five to 11 year olds getting vaccinated as well, that will make a big difference. We still have universal masking and ventilation uh, adjustments and distancing where possible. So all of those layers of protection have really helped. Our overall um, test positivity rate in, in schools from the survey testing that we do is 0.19%. Uh, but there are sometimes we have to take these steps of quarantining classrooms or even entire schools to help break the chains of transmission. Um, we we try to uh, avoid that, you know, by um, by those layers of protection that I mentioned. Um, but in some cases, we do have to take that step. Gotcha, Dr. Dave Choksi. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Thank you so much for keeping our kids safe and keeping all of us safe. Mm. Appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate it.